Welcome to this episode on healthy living in my channel, India Surging. I am Dr. Harry. During this session, I'll be talking to you about how to shed those extra pounds, extra weight I mean, from your body rather quickly without dieting, without medicines, or even without much exercise. You will never have to keep yourself hungry if you follow my steps. Right, without, before starting, as an intro to my background, I'm licensed to practice medicine in India. Uh, my registration number is 22538, Travancore Cochin Medical Council. I studied for my MBBS medical degree in Trivandrum Medical College in Kerala. I'm also registered with the UK General Medical Council. Uh, my registration number is 6110086. My education also includes um, other degrees like an MBA, an MSc in Finance, an MSc in International Health Policy, etc. from institutions in the US and the UK like the London Business School and the London School of Economics. I'm a regular runner. I've finished marathons and half marathons many times. I bicycle whenever I can. And depending on where I am located at that point in time, uh, I lead a very healthy lifestyle. I don't smoke or drink. I'm about five foot nine inches tall. I weigh 61 kilograms. And I'm proud to say I have a resting heart rate under 50. And I'm a 53 year old male. So whatever I'm gonna tell you during the session is based on evidence which I read from a book that is credible or from scientific papers. By the end of the session, you will learn techniques to lose weight effectively without much stress. Before we start getting into the nitty gritty, I have to warn you, what I'm about to tell you does not constitute medical advice. Please make sure that you check with your doctor if you have any doubt before taking action on anything you hear during this session. Now coming to managing your body weight, there are four things you need to focus on. Eat the right things, eat at the right times, sleep well, and keep moving whenever you can. Now, let's get into eating the right things. The first thing to do is dump all the wrong things that you have in your kitchen or fridge. No more cookies, no more cookies, no more biscuits, no more chocolate or anything sweet in areas of the house that you frequent. Instead, keep peanuts, cashew nuts, Brazil nuts, uh, whatever other nuts you can get. Um, keep them in places that you can easily access. Whenever you feel like snacking, take a small handful of them and eat. For breakfast, try to have eggs, ideally two, along with two slices of bread and peanut butter. You can try almond butter too. Um, if you're still hungry, take a bowl of dal, lentils, about 150 grams. You could substitute this with uh, things like, I mean, when I say substitute, you can substitute the bread with things like chapati or idlis or dosha, but you know, just two of any of them. But with idlis, you could probably do four or five. So for your lunch, have 100 grams of rice. Uh, two medium-sized chapatis. Take about 150 grams of dal if you have not had it for breakfast. If you already took dal, go for chana. Again, 150 grams. Uh, moong dal, green grams is also fine. And instead of the dal or in addition to the dal, you can take some meat as well. So meat can be anything you want. It could be chicken, it could be beef, it could be pork, uh, but again, um, about 100 grams. Do not overload your tummy during lunch. For your third meal or dinner, have meat or fish if you're non-vegetarian, and then again, have about 100 grams of meat, which will give you 26 grams of protein roughly. Take this with two chapatis, uh, 100 grams of rice, I mean, you, you can do you can do things like quinoa, depending on what you feel like eating. Uh, but in terms of access, if it's easiest to get your hands on rice, yeah, that's fine. Now, if you're a vegetarian, you know you can have chana dal or moong dal, about two hundred grams instead of meat. 
which will also give you about 26 grams of protein. That's with the three main meals. Um, now, you should eat other vegetables also, like carrots, tomatoes, beetroots, and especially the colored vegetables. You can also eat spinach, mushroom, cauliflower, broccoli, cucumber, lettuce, etc. Have these vegetables cooked as a curry or as a salad and have them along with lunch or maybe in place of some things that you take during lunch or same with dinner. And you can have it and do it with breakfast as well. Use a lot of garlic and onion in your cooking. The more, the better. And last but not the least, throw out your sunflower oil or vegetable oil or palm oil or coconut oil that you may have. Uh, in your house and just use extra virgin olive oil for cooking everything ideally this is something i follow you do not need to restrict drinking whole milk uh, you can have dairy products that are in reasonable quantities meaning you can have some butter it doesn't matter you can have butter uh, instead of peanut butter for breakfast along with your breads uh, and you can have as many cups of coffee or tea as you like as long as you do not put sugar in them if you need sweetening, use a sweetener. You can use sucralose or aspartame. I mean, recently you may have heard news that aspartame is a carcinogen, possible carcinogen, as per the WHO, but there's enough evidence from the US FDA and other bodies which clearly say that taking normal quantities as the human does for sweetening uh, your coffee or tea is not gonna kill you. It's not, it's not gonna be carcinogenic. So, and I take aspartame. I've been taking aspartame since 2003, I think. And now it's 2023, 20, 20 years. Uh, so far, I'm fine. But I'm a sample size of one. But, you know, lots of people have been drinking Diet Coke all over the world um, since it was launched more than 25 years ago. And uh, there's still been no real evidence that it's causing cancer. But um, so what I'm coming to is, you know, instead of sugar, take sweeteners. Sugar causes more harm than anything. Sugar is a bigger carcinogen, really, in my opinion, than any of these things. Now, I'm coming to taking shakes. Don't take any shakes because when you make a shake in a blender, it's basically damaging or you know, destroying the cell walls of, you know, the vegetables or fruits that you're putting in there. And... You know, that makes the stuff inside the cells more easily digestible in your tummy. And that means, you know, your glucose levels spike much more quicker in your bloodstream. And you don't want that. What you're trying to do is lower the glycemic index uh, um, in general of your meals by taking stuff that's of lower glycemic index and lower glycemic load. So do not use uh, a blender uh, in your house as much as possible to make juices or shakes same with juices don't take juices take whole fruits you can take you know fruits like apple orange banana etc um, again to reasonable quantities maybe two two apples or two oranges or two bananas a day would be fine there has been evidence recently that's come out that shows that fructose is one of the reasons for uh, fatty liver so um, you know fructose is not good really and fruits are the source for fructose. So be, um, be reasonable in your consumption of fruits. And as I said a little bit earlier, if you feel like snacking, go to your kitchen and take a handful of nuts and just take them. And, and drink water with most of these things uh, because water also helps you know, to keep you hydrated and also keep, to keep your tummy full. And when you're eating your meals, try not to watch or listen to anything intently because if you watch something intently like a video clip on your iphone or in your android phone and you know your concentration is fully on it then your brain is not going to be able to register the signals coming from your tummy telling it that your tummy is full or at least it'll delay the brain's recognition of the fact that your tummy is full and that's not great you'll keep eating even when you've been you know even when your hunger's been satiated and that's not what you want so um, avoid a sensory signal overload when you're eating. And this applies to audio as well. So if you're listening to a podcast and if you're concentrating on what the, the, the podcast was saying, then again, the same situation arises with the brain not being able to register when your tummy is really full. So you can have ambient music in the place where you're eating. You can have the news running on the TV. 
as long as it's not really something that you're going to concentrate on, like news on you know your investments or anything. Right. So to sum up, you need a lot of fiber daily. You need about 30 grams of fiber a day to be exact. And you'll get this from dal, chana, moong dal, spinach, etc. Also from the fruits that you eat, like bananas. And if you can access berries, you know, have them. They also have a lot of uh, fiber. But in addition, you know, berries are superb uh, in terms of antioxidant and anti-inflammatory effects and phytophenols, um, which do a lot of good to your body. The fiber that you take will fill up your tummy without giving you calories. The fiber will also improve the microbiome in your small intestine and colon or large intestine. And by microbiome, I mean the bacteria, the fungi, and the viruses that live there. It's proven that your microbiome is critical for your health. Fiber serves as a nutrition for your microbiome. A fiber is digested by bacteria in your microbiome in the colon to release short chain fatty acids called butyrates. And th these butyrates are food for the cells lining the large intestine. And fiber also reduces absorption of cholesterol. Fiber also reduces the speed of digestion of carbohydrates to glucose, which in a way can reduce the glycemic index of higher glycemic index foods that you've taken. So you know, if you take fiber along with the high, that high glucose or high refined sugar food that you've taken, it'll actually reduce the glycemic index and reduce the harm. Overall, fiber is a superfood. Fiber can be called a prebiotic since it helps feed the microbiome. Pro probiotics actually are live bacteria that actually improves your microbiome. And postbiotics are products that the bacteria produce in your intestine, which actually help your body. So it's, there are prebiotics, bio, probiotics, and postbiotics. And fiber is a prebiotic. Now, let me come to olive oil. So olive oil is a superfood. It's been shown to reduce the incidence of heart attacks and strokes in people who consume a lot of them, a lot of the olive oil. <laughs> uh, so, you know, in as part of the Mediterranean diet. And this applies to nuts as well. That's why I said take nuts when you feel like snacking. They're tasty and they do great work on your body. It reduces the incidence of heart attacks and strokes. So if possible, have nuts and olive oil as part of your diet. And you'll also be getting sufficient fat from the olive oil for your diet. Uh, you'll also, of course, get fats from meats uh, and the nuts that you consume as well. Tomatoes are another superfood. They contain something called lycopenes, which have been found to work as antioxidants and as anti-inflammatory agents. Um, and all colored vegetables have uh, some lycopene in them. And so include tomato in all your cooking. You can have tomato in your gravy. Um, as passata, you can add tomato to any curry um, to your taste. And you can also add slices of tomato to most curries and take tomato as such in your salads. It's a great food. Now, I think that sums up our eating the right things section. Let me go to eating at the right times now. I mean, this is even more critical than eating the right things. To tell you the truth, your aim should be to consume all your meals for a day within a 12 hour time span. So, assuming you had your first meal at breakfast at 7 in the morning, at 7 a.m., you should have finished your dinner by 7 p.m. So, all your foods were consumed within 12 hours. Um, and this, you can have snacks in between. You don't count your calories. You eat your three meals in between. That's all fine, but stick to these 12 hours and make sure that the last meal that you take is at least three hours before your bedtime. So if it's seven that you finish your dinner, then go to bed at 10, not earlier. Or adjust your last meal time based on when you go to bed. And the reason is, you know, this has all got to do with insulin. So when you take a food with carbohydrates, your pancreas produces insulin to digest that. And this insulin helps the digested carbohydrates in the form of glucose in your bloodstream to get inside the cells. Once the glucose gets inside the cells, they participate in what's called the citric acid cycle um, or also in um, anaerobic respiration. Uh, and essentially releases energy that your body needs in the form of ATP molecules. So 
that's what insulin does to release energy. But on the other hand, whenever you have uh, even low levels of insulin in your bloodstream, the fat in your fat tissue cannot be pulled back into the bloodstream to burn for energy to release ATP molecules. So in order for fat from your fat tissue to be released into the bloodstream for the energy generation process, your insulin level needs to go down to a very low level or to nothing basically. And for this to happen, after your last carbohydrate meal, it's going to take at least two to three hours. This is based on studies that I've read. So if you have your last meal at seven, by the time you go to bed about seven, uh, 10 o'clock, or at least by 11, your insulin levels would have dropped to a sufficient level that the fat from your fat tissue gets drawn into your bloodstream for further processing to release energy in your body. And that's what you want. You want to burn your fat. And that's the best way to burn fat. You know, leave enough time for the body to burn fat by preventing carbohydrate meals to creep into every you know, meal. I mean, you can, you can have your last meal by seven and you can still go to bed at 10 and you can still leave your body about 12 hours to burn fat. So this is something you have to keep in mind. And if you want to lose fat quickly, what you can do is you can reduce the time span during which you eat to even eight hours if you can do it. So that's like you know having your first meal at eight and your final meal at four o'clock in the evening, which may not be possible for everyone. So you could, you know, just skip breakfast, have your first meal as lunch at 12. I mean, for breakfast, have just coffee if you can, black coffee again. And as long as you don't put sugar or cream in that, you know, it's just like water. So you could have a caffeine and then have your noon uh, meal, basically the lunch as your first meal of the day. And then finish off with an 8, 8 p.m. dinner. So, you know, you're basically giving your body 16 hours, roughly, to burn fat, you won't, your body won't get to 16 hours for burning fat because after your meal at eight o'clock, the dinner at eight o'clock in the evening, it'll still still take about four hours for the insulin levels to shut down. But at least that'll leave another 12 hours for the body to just burn fat. So keep this in mind. You know, shorten the time span during which you have your meals, and anything before your first meal or after the last meal has to be water or black coffee or coffee with sweetener or tea, uh, black tea or tea with sweetener. And keep to this. It's really going to help you. Um, so that's essentially about eating at the right time. Um, now, sleeping for eight hours. That's the other thing. You know, sleep is critical. It's the third thing that you have to do to lose weight. Because if you don't sleep long enough, the effects are terrible. It's, there is evidence to show that people who don't sleep eight hours, or at least the sleep that makes you comfortable. So for some people, you know, sleeping for six hours would keep them comfortable. When they wake up, they don't feel drowsy. They're fine. So, uh, and there are others who need a little bit more than eight hours. But overall, if you are not undersleeping, your body will work very efficiently. And if you're all, if you're not sleeping enough. It's been shown that such people have a higher incidence of diabetes, heart disease, and everything else, basically, all the other illnesses. So sleep for eight hours. And the, most people find it difficult to actually shut their eye. Basically, They can lie on the bed, but they can't sleep. And uh, some of the tricks that I've tried and worked and which I've read about are, one, listen to an audiobook. You know, it's with an alarm set for 30 minutes for the thing to shut off. Alarm meaning, uh, you know, set your you know, app, audiobook app or podcast app to shut down after 30 minutes. Um, yes, you can listen to it and you're likely to fall asleep during that time. The other thing is have a warm bath about half an hour before you go to bed. One to one hour maybe. Even half hour is fine before you go to bed. And the aim here is to reduce your core body temperature. If your core body temperature drops by about a degree Celsius, it's been shown to enable sleep. Uh, even if you take a warm bath, it's fine because you know after you take a warm bath, your body is going to you know give up heat by you know dilating the blood vessels in your in your in your skin. Um, so essentially, you know you, your body temperature will drop. So sleep 
can be encouraged with a bath at the right time, one hour to 30 minutes before sleep. Then um, I've read recently that, you know, even playing video games like Tetris on your mobile phone with the display brightness turned low can help. Because one of the reasons people can't fall asleep is because they're still thinking about things that happen during the day and also about stuff that they have to do the next day after waking up. And if you uh, play something like Tetris, which doesn't take much thinking, it's more physical and reflex based. So if you play something like Tetris, your brain will stop thinking about everything that happened today, during the day and everything that you need to do for the next day after waking up. And this has been shown to help you sleep. Lastly, you know, make sure you don't take coffee after 3 p.m. Uh, if you are on a slow metabolizer, like many people, or more like most people. So if you take a coffee after 3 p.m. in the evening, you might find it difficult to sleep at 10 o'clock. Um, if you're a fast metabolizer, you're fine. I mean, I am in that group. You know, I can take a coffee at 9 and sleep, fall asleep at 10. But most people are slow metabolizers of caffeine. Or you can, the other option for you if you're a slow metabolizer is to take a decaffeinated coffee. Um, um, the same with tea also, you know, if you're a slow metabolizer, because tea contains some caffeine, best to take it before three. Now, if you wake up in the middle of the night after you fell asleep, and then you can't go back to bed, I mean, this happens to many people because then you might get up to pee in the night and then you go back to bed and you can't sleep. You need to, you can use any of the techniques I said before. You could just start listening to that podcast again. 30 minutes um, or you can just try playing Tetris on your phone. I'm saying Tetris but there could be other games like that. It don't involve much thinking uh, but always keep the display brightness low. Those things can still help you fall back asleep. One key thing to remember if you wake up in the middle of the night and you're trying to go back to bed don't look at the clock because if you look at the clock and you see that it's 4 a.m. for instance and you need to wake up at 6 you know each minute you spend on bed, you're going to still fidget about the fact that, you know, you're going to be able to sleep less and less if you fall asleep later, right? So best to hide the time. I mean, I know that it's good to know the time, uh, you know, if you wake up in the night for some other reasons. But, you know, if you want to have a good sleep, it's best to not see the time when you wake up or when you're trying to go back to bed. Now, that's, I think, uh, all about sleep. There's nothing more I can help you with at this point. But now the last part of the technique of losing weight is moving whenever you can. I'm not talking about serious exercise. You know, take a brisk walk uh, if you can for 30 minutes daily. You can split it into three. You can split it into 10, three minute walks, but do it five days a week. Try to get up frequently from your seat, uh, maybe every 30 minutes. And you can set that up in your watch. And if it's a if it's a Apple or Android watch, um, then if you can't, if you don't have the ability to go outside and walk because of you know traffic issues or your work schedule, somehow put this time on in a treadmill at home or in a gym. You know, walk briskly for thirty minutes or run slowly for thirty minutes, and the key thing with running that I can tell you as a runner is, you know, what prevents many people from running is the fact that you get tired quickly. You, know, you, you hit a wall very quickly when you're starting a run. And all you need to do is reduce the speed. The speed doesn't matter at all. Even for mar my marathons, you know, when I'm training for my marathons, I don't care about the speed. It's the volume that you put in. Just put in 30 minutes somehow. That's all that's needed. Speed doesn't count in this. And... and do it five days a week. And another good thing to do is do some light exercises with weights, um, with dumbbells, and with some machines. Do it for 30 minutes if you can in the gym, two to three times a week. Uh, that will keep your you know, muscles toned. Plus, you know, they're shown to have benefits. It's very similar to aerobic exercise, like running in fat. So you know, if you do time at the gym or with weights, you know, you can even avoid running or walking that day if you don't have time for both. Yeah, but, you know, try to do minimum exercise like I've just now mentioned. I think that's it for now. So 
If you follow the four things that I talked about, you're going to lose your weight. Uh, you're likely to lose weight very quickly in the first month. After that, it'll slow down, though you'll keep losing weight over a period of time. In fact, you know, this is a lifestyle that you just have to follow for the rest of your life, basically. It'll, it'll keep you much more healthy. Your chances of developing diabetes, high blood pressure, heart disease, stroke, and cancer will be less if you follow this lifestyle. I mean, this is based on lots of research that I've gone through and books that I've read that focus on that research. So I would suggest that prior to undertaking this, the techniques that I just talked about, it will be good if you undergo a series of lab tests. First is the lipid profile for testing your cholesterol levels. And then the next one is for HbA1c, glycosylated hemoglobin levels, for, to check your blood glucose control. And a liver function test to see if your liver is functioning well. You need to do these before you start. Um, ideally, and that also serves as a benchmark. You know, you can check later on after three months and see how these things are changing. So you actually can see for yourself how your know, these techniques are working for you. So this will suit, I mean, whatever I told you until now will suit many people who want to lose weight and live a healthy life. But if you need personal attention, feel free to consult me. My information is there on your screen on the top left of the video. Um, I'll be talking about how you can live a healthy life in future sessions also. Uh, so please subscribe to my channel. In addition, I'll talk about things that will make you a better person overall. And um, I'll give you nuggets of uh, information that I gain from my reading. I read a, quite a lot. Uh, and, you know, if you don't have time to read, you know, I'll at least help you uh, know many things that you'd otherwise not even hear about. Um, the time you spend listening to me will definitely be time well spent. And if you want to check out um, where I come from, what I've been uh, doing with my life, you can check my LinkedIn profile. Uh, in LinkedIn, I'm listed as Harry Vikram. Uh, my legal name is Harry Trivikramji. I've shortened the Trivikramji to Vikram to make it easier for people to say. And if you have any other questions about you know, losing weight, feel free to just email me. My email is also there, uh, the top left of your screen. It's harry at harryco.in. Um, and subscribe to the India Surgeon channel. Um, I really want to do whatever I can to help India Surgeon. India is surging like anything right now. It's the place where every investor wants to be. Um, and um, I want to help in whatever way I can with helping my fellow Indians. Thank you for listening. Bye now. Jai Hind.